Well, there's no mistaking it, folks. We're back in one of my favorite spots. That's your granny's kitchen. Now, you could have a granny whose kitchen you remember from the 30s, 40s, 50s, or 60s. We've got a little bit of everything here. But before we begin, today's cup of coffee is brought to you by... A cup of coffee, a sandwich, and you. A cozy corner, a paper. Well, it's brought to us by the Sebring Pottery Company of Sebring, Ohio, first located in East Liverpool. Oh, sometime in the 18 umpty umps got started. A whole bunch of, there was a whole gaggle of them. I think five brothers and a couple of sisters, and they were very successful making several lines of American dinnerware. This little cup and saucer is going to date to the 1930s and it's in a pale yellow color with some stylized green flowers on it. It's got a lot of crazing and staining on it but it's a sunny fun little set and I enjoy it. Now that's not the regular old ginger snap. No, no. We're only a few weeks away from Mo Memorial Day which I can hardly believe. The ginger snaps have been retired until next fall, and we have moved on to lemon snaps. Mm-hmm. I think you'll approve. What say you? We'll start in the 1930s when green transparent glass was the rage. It came on the scene in the early, well, the late 20s, thanks to the elegant glass companies and then the kitchen glass companies uh, got a hold of it, and the major players are pretty much Anchor Hocking, Federal, Hazel Atlas, and McKee, although there are other companies who made it. Most of it is produced uh, by those four. Am I forgetting anybody? I probably am, which is why it's good to own the kitchen glassware of the Depression years by, of course, the one and only late great Gene Florence. Several editions were put out. That's the fifth right there. I think I only have one edition, just this one. But it's very helpful. Uh, you'll find these very inexpensively priced. It's a uh, all color pictures on the inside, as we can see. Oh boy, I'm already salivating over that Art Deco juice dispenser right there. All right, let's put this away. So that's a, no a nod. Oops, I'm sorry. That's a nod to today's reference. Now, the glass that you see here, we have a variety of makers, mostly Anchor, Hocking, and uh, Hazel Atlas. So what we're going to start off with is a Hocking bowl. Now, remember, 
it was Hawking Glass until I think 1937 when they merged with Anchor Glass. So when you see, well, let's see if we can see. When you see that mark on the bottom, on the bottom, yeah, there we are. Uh, we see H, uh, C, G, Hawking Glass Company. Well, I know we see H and a G for Hawking Glass. These will all glow under a black light, as we're going to see in a moment. And um, small mixing bowl, nice heavy glass. Now, this is kitchen glass. You're going to find little scratches on it. Granny beat an awful lot of eggs in that. Here are a couple of refrigerator dishes I'm in love with. That one I think is Hawking. Uh, all glass. Wonderful condition. Uh, we've got one edge chip right there, which it's really hard to get. Well, okay, so it's underneath the rim, but there are no other chips on this, and there aren't any chips on the base container either. Now, what you do have to become used to with depression glass, I know I've said this before, but it's important to remind everybody in case you aren't familiar, you're going to find straw marks, you're going to find roughness around edges, inclusions, you might even find dirt in the glass. Um, cheap, mass-produced, spit off of the assembly line and set to the homes. Who cared? This was used in the kitchen. And in the kitchen? It's not like today where we have this open concept. Nobody sat in your kitchen and watched you prepare your dinner. Uh, it just wasn't part of our lives in those days. So this glass was not beautiful glass. It was used. It was beaten up. And in many cases you'll have some rough uh, edges uh, along seams and edges and, and whatnot. Roughness. It's just part of the game when you're dealing with glass. But what I try to avoid is sick glass that was murdered in dishwashers. Anything that's cracked, forget it. And I don't do anything with major chips. I am forgiving with little chips on kitchen glass. I mean, how can you avoid it? So a wonderful refrigerator dish there with lid. And uh, here is another, oh, I just can't stand it. I know, I know, I'm not gonna slurp, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna smack. Hold on, you're eating too, you know you are. So hold, let me just have this, mm, 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 mm. mm wait a minute, hold on. Let's see what I did. Okay, there we go. Granny did not like, anything dripped on her linoleum or granite countertops which she didn't have so here's another example of a refrigerator dish with a nice little button knob here for the lid and lift that right up beautiful glass this one is hazel atlas it is marked way down in there no chips little roughness on the inside of the lid, uh, the base rather, but look how beautiful that lid is. Boy, I love it. And then a third refrigerator dish, also with the little button lid there. Notice the greens are not the same. I don't know how well you're seeing it. This one has a little more yellow than this one. None of this is Vaseline glass. No, no, remember, you go, we already talked about Vaseline. Hold on, I've got a piece of Vaseline over here. Wait a minute, don't go anywhere. I'm gonna set you down. What do you wanna look at while I set you down? We'll let you look at, uh, we'll let you look at that because everybody was screaming at me to sell it. And I'm gonna sell it. Here's a piece of Vaseline that belongs to a lovely person who uh, won this in an auction and I'm going to deliver it to her when I see her. We've already talked about this, but it bears repeating. Yellow. This is Vaseline. This is uranium. 
if you're referring to this as Vaseline glass, um, I wouldn't do that. Your hardcore Vaseline glass collectors do not consider this Vaseline. Re remember, it's the yellow tint. Forget this opalescent up here. As you can see the difference. So there's Vaseline glass. And that's already been sold. And then this is all uranium. And yes, the uranium is okay. Uh, you're you're going to be fine. So an oval-shaped refrigerator dish with just a, l a little bit less green in it than this. They had different formulas. And then we have two mixing bowls back there, graduated. These are nesting bowls. We've talked about the base of these bowls before. Now I had to go and put that on upside down and I cannot, I know you're all biting your nails as I do this over this granite, granite countertop. Okay, so there's the, there's one and there's two. They're matching bowls and then they nest in each other. So there would have been a larger one and maybe a fourth, a third and a fourth. We'll just put those there. These I'll sell together. Everything else is being sold uh, individually. Now we'll go over here to what's very familiar and we won't ramble on. Pyrex, gooseberry in black, the Cinderella bowl. This was a set of four and they were black and then the other two were yellow. So there were two black and two yellow. Let me see that. So that's just one. Uh, I don't remember. I can't see. You'll have to go on the uh, eBay site and you'll see the, so the sizes of everything. And also, of course, better pictures. There's the blue Amish butterprint refrigerator dish with lid in excellent condition. Just look at... Listen, there's a lot of Pyrex out there. The Pyrex I buy is top of the line and I'm gonna sort of toot my own horn because I turned down a lot of Pyrex because it's all it's washed within an inch of its life the graphics are dull or missing or it's filled with scratches and there are things you can do to revive it I know but I only like to buy really 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 good condition and so that's the refrigerator dish there's the mixing bowl set um, the four bowls in the primary it came on the scene in 1945 and was made into the 60s at some point. And there's all four of them in the, the all four of the primary set. Thank you again, thank you again, again, again to the subscriber who gifted this wonderful bowl to me. She saw that I had these three that I bought at a thrift shop. But I didn't have the yellow one, and I met her across the bridge. She she watches, and and she's she I met she and her husband, and they've thrifted forever. And she was so kind to gift me the yellow bowl so that I would have a complete set to sell. So nice, and I appreciate it. Boy, wouldn't breakfast time be fun with these little Hazel Atlas juice glasses? They are so cute, and we've got yellow and black. These look brand new. I don't think they were used. There's not a bit of dishwasher damage on them. And then we've got red and black. You see this? And the turquoise and black. And pink and black. So they are marked Hazel Atlas on the bottom four adorable little juice glasses for the breakfast table in all those wonderful 1950s yeah colors maybe early 60s and then I had everybody I had a bunch of people say come on and sell that 1930s Art Deco range set you don't like red anyway you like green well that's true green is my thing and so I am selling it there it is. I have seen it in milk glass with this same pattern on the sides, but we've got all four of them here. 
and I hope you'll go and look at the pictures that I took in the sunlight. They, they're so much better than what you can see here. Here they are on their little red metal caddy. They're nice and clean, and uh, I love the wear all around. We can see they were, they were well loved and well used, but there are no chips or, and no cracks, and the glass is beautifully clean and all ready to go. You can use these, I would. I wouldn't just display them, I would use them. Remember, a lot of times the range set was given away for free when you bought a stove back in those days, in the Depression days. And um, you would have uh, salt and pepper and flour and sugar would be uh, the four containers in a range set. Not, I've never seen this one before and I certainly am in love with it on this little uh, metal caddy. Uh, to which onto which it fits and has lived for quite some time. Mm-hmm. That's a that's a good one right there. All original lids and paint and everything. Well, okay, everyone. This was just a lot of fun. It's all listed in the old Curiosity Shop. The link to my store is in the description box right below the video. And I want to thank everybody. And again. Listen, I, if you find something you like and you and you decide to buy it and you're su successful in, in the auctions, that's great. And if you don't buy any, don't feel like you have to buy stuff, go look at the pictures anyway. Um, I just love that you enjoy all of these old things as much as I do. And what memories come back to us when we remember chocolate chip cookies being stirred up. How many of you licked the bowl? when your cookies were being made in these Pyrex mixing bowls right here. Who had this breakfast set? Anybody remember drinking their orange juice before school in those? And uh, you're either really, really old <laughs>60 years ago, well not 60 years ago, <laughs> the same Pyrex mixing bowls that she got when she was married in 1964, she's still using them. I think it's wonderful and charming, and I bet you do too. What was your favorite thing? I'd love to know. All right, that's it. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop. I'm going to sit down and have my coffee, which is cool enough now to drink. I might even have a second lemon snap. Woohoo! All right, folks, that's it. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop saying thanks for watching and so long for now.